Holly Corney was born and bred in Seven Oaks. She's been an investment banker, has a first in mechanical engineering from Cambridge, an organiser of women's football in London, and plays in a professional string quartet. We could probably call her a polymath on that alone. And now, though, she has a third novel to her name, a dark tale called The Day I Died. Polly's in our London studio this afternoon. Hi, Polly. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you, yes. Let's hope the beginning of your book doesn't happen to you when you walk out of our London studio today. (laughs) Well, let's hope, yeah. It's a little bit of a a shocking, startling opening to the book. Tell Um, us what happens. Yeah, well, um, so the book all starts with, and I don't want to give too much away, obviously, but... uh, You can tell us the the start, don't tell us the end. I can tell you the start, yeah. (laughs) It's it's on the back of the book, so that's fair enough. Um, Yeah, it starts with um, a young lady who um, wakes up amid sort of carnage and debris um, and doesn't know where she is, but uh, sort of more importantly, she doesn't know who she is. So um, she sort of has to go from there without knowing, you know, anything about herself or where she is. Where did the idea come from? Well, initially, um, it all started when uh, I, I was talking with my publisher, HarperCollins, about um, sort of the way people are changing their lives so much these days, and particularly with the sort of doom and gloom and everyone just deciding, right, you know, m- maybe I need a change. Maybe, maybe I, you know, there's no point in living this life, or maybe I've just been redundant, so um, let's change it all. And we, we sort of started talking about what if you could just wipe the slate clean and then start a new life? Mm, what would you do? Oh, I've got too many options, really. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you've done most of that. You've wiped the slate clean about five times already. <laughs> oh, there's plenty more I can do. How many more slates do you need? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got a few ideas in my back pocket. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'll ask you about those later. This is a slightly uh, different departure for you from a writing point of view because the first couple of books, Golden Handcuffs, was about your life and experience in The Square Mile, albeit a, a fictionalised account. Poles Apart was, I think, uh, a story of migrants that, that you had some personal experience of through through friends that's but, right but this is this is clearly well sort of complete fiction it is, that's true actually it is it is um it is a step change from um, my last two which were sort of semi-biographical in some ways so very much based on the truth um but this one i suppose I, I think if you read it you'll probably find that actually it's sort of it draws upon um experiences of people that i know and and people you know perhaps myself uh but that the overall theme isn't quite so kind of uh about one person I know or about myself. Okay. <laughs> the brand new novel is called The Day I Died. You had the launch party last night. How did That's that right. Oh, it was, it was brilliant. I'm just uh, I'm still sort of reliving bits of it now, but um, it was a really good night, yeah. Now, when you were growing up, Seven Oaks, Tunbridge, I know, is your, your background. Were you particularly bookish or...? Um, I have to say, no, not at all. Um, English literature was my worst subject at school. Um, (laughs) It's a very strange... um, I sort of got into writing in the most peculiar way. Um, I did um, all sorts of sort of science and maths, you know, um, subjects at school and then went off to do mechanical engineering at university. So that was my bias. And it was only really when I went into the city, realised that it really wasn't all it was cracked up to be and that, you know, something needed doing, that I I thought, well, how about I write a book about it? And, uh, yeah, that did... That ju- did shock a few of my friends, and they, there was, you know, a lot of wariness. Like, do you really want to write a book? Are you sure? <laughs> you had a huge reception, uh, but both kind of critical and, uh, and from an audience point of view, uh, about the book. You were, you were sort of lifting the lid on on sexism in the square mile and, and all sorts of all sorts of things. Yeah, that that's true. Um, it was a couple of years ago now. So when it launched, um, it was it was the year when, believe it or not, bonuses in the city were the highest they'd been for about. 20 years or so so there's all sorts of news and press uh, coverage on that but the alternative angle was but what's it really like and at the time you know uh, it ha- I happened to be launching the book at exactly that moment which was great so um, there was there were mixed reactions um, including some not so good from the uh, the colleagues uh, my ex-colleagues in the bank <laughs> but um, but mainly it was kind of uh, intrigue I suppose about what really goes on and what it's really like for junior investment bankers did you anticipate that everything was going to go belly up or did you- I I got out of it for for, um, ultimately for sort of personal reasons it didn't suit me but um, but those personal reasons are the same reasons that a lot of people are miserable in the city so um, and even yeah. more miserable over the last sort of 12 months exactly yeah I'm, I have to say I feel um, I, d- I don't want to say smug but I feel a lot happier that I'm um, out of it and doing something completely different that I love doing than uh, if I'd stayed and made a lot of money all right you've trained as a mechanic quit engineering sold your soul to the city quit banking now you're writing fiction uh, how long till you quit that and turn to something else ah uh, no i think i found my calling i think <laughs> this is what i love doing i'm um, working on book four as we speak <laughs> oh can you give us a hint as to what i want about 
Um, oh no! Ooh, no, I don't think I can actually. Subject it's, matter. It's an em- embryonic stage. Oh, um, right, okay. It's a it's some, something topical in our society today. Mm. <laughs> Intriguing. What on earth, could it be? <laughs> I wonder. Ooh, what's been in the news at the moment? Oh, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to tell you. All right. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll remember uh, the duck pond in Otford, um, just up the road from where, where you grew up in oh, Seven yes. Oaks, clearly. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the uh, duck house later, because, you know, who, who would have thought in this day and age that a duck house could bring down the career of a Tory grandee? But there it is. Strange mm-hmm. things happen in our society at the moment. Strange things happen in the third novel from <laughs> Polly Courtney. The Day I Died, it's called. It's out right now. Polly, great to talk to you. You too, uh, thank you. Be careful when you leave the studio today in London, aren't you? Will do.